not a test. This is your emergency broadcast system announcing the commencement of the annual purge sanctioned by the U.S. government. Weapons of class four and low. Sorry to interrupt, but I wanted to bring you an even more important announcement. I wanted to bring you something special. So before we continue on with whatever she has to say, I want to start by telling you happy 4th of July, everyone. Have a happy Independence Day. If you're not in the U.S. and you're not celebrating today, then hopefully you'll enjoy this video. If you are, I hope you're having a fun, safe Independence Day. So let's get started. So today I will be ranking and reviewing the Purge franchise. Now... As of the recording of this video, I understand there's a new one coming out and or it might already be in theaters now, actually. But when I was planning to do this video, I had zero knowledge that there was one on the way. And it actually just started seeing trailers for the newest one right after I had already decided I was going to do this. So, as I said in a previous video, when something like this happens, I will probably come back a few years later and re-rank the series, but at least it'll give me some content for the future, and you could see if my ideas have changed. So what is this franchise about? Well, if you're not familiar with it, I mean, that intro was kind of summing up perfectly. That's one of my favorite parts of each of these is, you know, hearing that, you know, little intro. It's ominous and engaging. It's like, this is everything you need to tell what your movie is about. And... Some people can do that with stories. Some people can't. I unfortunately have a little bit of an issue where I could not sum up an entire series into a paragraph. So I'll just come right out and say it. For those who don't know, The Purge is about all crime being legal for 12 hours, one night a year. The idea being that if people can commit crimes with out fear of being persecuted for those crimes, then they will behave the rest of the year. Although, you know, honestly, I mean, it's a slightly different approach, but it's kind of like Christmas. Only in reverse, I guess. Um, because, I mean, the idea is that if a child behaves all year long, then they'll get what they want on Christmas morning from Santa Claus. Which, if you are familiar with my books, you'll know I have, you know, some thoughts on that very topic. Um... But yeah, so the idea is like, okay, so if you could rob a bank or kill somebody, then you'll be a perfect person all the rest of the year. And we're going to get into why this does and doesn't work. I do want to say if you stick around until the end of this video, I have a very interesting story to tell you. When it comes to this franchise and some thoughts I've had versus thoughts other people have had. So let's get started. Number six. The Purge. Now I know this is a little taboo putting the original all the way at the bottom. I mean, it's understandable. Well, yeah, it's not. Usually the original makes it up. Higher on most list for most other movie franchises, but I think it's pretty universally known that because of the scale 
of this franchise and what we get later down the road that yeah it kind of got pushed down to the bottom so the purge was actually promoted as a horror movie and yeah horror in my opinion is sort of around for most of this franchise but to me this franchise has always been more action heavy this is like this is like the alien franchise to me the first one was supposed to be horror but it really wasn't that scary but the more and more it went on the more and more action based it became or like the Terminator franchise only good <laughs> there's like differences of opinion on which Terminators are good not the actual Terminators but you know the movies it's pretty cut clear and dry which ones are good which ones are bad they will literally tell you in those movies but moving on um so what is this about why did it make it so low on the ranking well I as I've explained the premise this particular movie follows a family one family through the night now I have some issues with this movie major plot points that don't make any sense maybe I didn't understand something but okay so the first problem I had with this one was there's this thrown in thing about the boyfriend now I want to start by kind of digging a little deeper into this family so this family they're rich and the husband owns a company where they make security systems to keep people safe during the purge and apparently they're doing really well this year they the most the units they've sold in a year the problem with this is that uh, the daughter is a minor and she's dating someone who's not a minor or at least someone the father doesn't approve of and he kind of makes himself go into the situation because he wants to kill her father yeah that's the way to keep your girlfriend kill her father on purge night she's gonna love you for the rest of your life what was this dude thinking seriously I mean okay I understand that in this world murder is legal on this night that doesn't mean people are stupid and not going to hold grudges she did not I mean if she wanted her father dead that'd be an entirely different story but she did not want her father dead she just wanted his approval of her relationship and I think you know that was really stupid to put the boyfriend in that situation now maybe if the boyfriend had been there because he wasn't entirely convinced that their security system was super secure or something I don't know just put him in there to be the hero or something or maybe he was outside or just something different because the way the boyfriend was put in there was just so dumb I mean he's literally there to be a throwaway plot device because after he dies it never really gets brought up again not like oh he's in my bedroom or I mean usually in horror movies or in any movie when something happens like that they usually refer back to it like oh do you remember this well yeah that doesn't happen here 
And then, probably the biggest problem I had with this movie was the neighbors. And I'll dive into that here in just a second. The best part is actually, you know, what the main story revolves around. So, the son opens up the security system to let a stranger into the house who's begging for help. And this group of rich kids come along and track him there and say, Hey, you've got the person we're looking for. Give him to us or we're going to kill you all. That is probably the best part. And I don't want to go into any more detail on that. Just accept that that is probably the best part of that movie. And the worst part is at the very end. And I'll say this once again. Spoilers for the entire franchise moving forward. But the neighbors actually come to the rescue and save the family from getting, well, some of the family, because one of them gets killed. But they save this family, kind of, because they want to purge this family. Because, well, a very stupid reason. Basically, this family got rich selling security systems, which... All the neighbors bought, and they feel jaded by it? What? Okay, number one. First off, I know that's the same thing, but you did not have to buy his security system. It's like if your buddy owns a car dealership, you don't have to buy your car there. There's a lot of other places you could go buy your car. If you're feeling that bad that you didn't have a business related to the most profitable thing on the planet, next to sex, then why do you feel bad? You're all rich too. I'm sure your money did not come from nowhere. You've got people out there looking to purge your head that night too. But no. All the neighbors, they break in, they save the family because they want to kill this family because this family put a new addition on their house and they bought the security system so they felt, you know, they paid for that house and this family's rubbing their faces in the money. I mean, it looks like a regular suburban home. It's not like a mansion house. But at the same time, all your neighbors have the same house. You're all making the same good amount of money. And again, if you really felt that way, why did you buy his system? Which, ultimately, to tell you the truth, seems to be a waste of money. Because if people really want in, they're going to get in. Which is actually mentioned in the freaking movie. I've talked about the first one enough. It still was good enough to go check out and see it for yourself. It was good enough to get the ball rolling. I just didn't feel that compared to the others on this list, it was that great. But moving on to number five. And for this, I'm going to have to say Season 1 of The Purge TV series. This follows several different people on some random Purge night. And you get a little bit of story for other places besides, you know, like major big cities. I don't even know which city this took place in. And it really doesn't matter. It could take place anywhere, anytime. Yeah, it's nothing big, grand, spectacular. But it did get the TV show off the ground, so that's pretty good. It felt like one of the Purge movies. It had all the same things that the Purge movies had. So, 
I can't really fault it. The stories, the different stories they told were interesting. It was kind of like, you know, three movies rolled into a TV series. So if you're looking to really extend your purge hours, then check out the TV show for season. It's good. Moving on to number four. And for number four, I'm going to have to say The Purge Anarchy. So, on the surface, it seems like this was going to set a trend that each Purge movie was going to be either a different Purge night or something. And you really weren't sure how this was going to connect to the first one. You got a couple different groups that you're following now you're not just following one particular family or one particular person but you're following a couple different people each with their own reasons or scenarios as to why they are out on the night of the purge when they don't want some of them don't want to be some of them do some of them have reasons and this one was the one where they started making sure you knew there was a bigger story. They laid out some questions, but they didn't quite answer them completely. You just get hits at these. Moving on to number three. I'm going to have to say number three for me is probably season two of the Purge TV show. Now, the reason why this is actually this far up the list is because of the fact that most of the movies take place on Purge Night. Even the first season of the TV show took place on Purge Night. But this season of the TV show was much more interesting because this showed the state of the world outside of Purge Night. Like, the season starts off with the final hour of the Purge concluding, and then it moves into, you know, how people are punished, how people prepare for the next Purge. You got this one guy who was targeted for assassination on Purge Night, and he spends the entire season trying to find out who did it. Because he realizes that when the next Purge starts, he's going to have to watch his back, because that bounty is still going to be out there on him, which someone's going to come to collect on Purge Night the next time a Purge Night comes. So even the rich aren't exactly all safe. You got, like I said, multiple different stories. You know, you got a college kid who has gone off the deep end. The most interesting and probably the main storyline of this season that I really liked the most was there was this group of bank robbers. And like I said, you know, all crime is legal for 12 hours, but they aren't kidding that when that 12 hours is up, it's up. This guy gets busted by a video camera because the tip of his boot was over the property line when the final siren sounded, ending the purge. So, I guess, you know, there's no leeway. Although, I think it was... I mean, yes, I understand the concept that they want to be as harsh as possible with anybody who breaks the law after the purge, so... Nobody is inspired to break the law after the purge. And they are brutal. Like, very brutal. Like, people want to talk about police brutality in real life. This is probably worse. And this is not probably limited to just this city or state or town. This is probably countrywide. Cops are probably told to be this brutal. To make sure to send the message that you don't break the law after purge night. You behave yourself. If you want to 
have more purge nights. Like I said, this showed us a side of the world we don't normally get to see. We don't normally get to see the aftermath of the purge and what people do to prepare for the next year, especially when they are targeted. But moving on to number two, the first purge. This was not countrywide. This was a very downscaled movie compared to the previous two before it. Yeah, this is where they're just practicing with the purge. The government is like, hey, let's test this out. Because this doctor had the idea that, oh, if people can break the law one night a year. And the government took that as, okay, so if people can break the law, they'll kill each other. Yeah, this is where I have a major problem with uh, the entire logic behind the purge. Because the government's plan is that they want to get rid of the lower class so there is no lower class. But that makes no sense whatsoever because if you get... Don't you rich people realize if you get rid of the lower class in any way, shape, or form, then you have to do all your own stuff. That means you might be the head of a company running your business, but you want that toilet scrubbed, you have to go do it. You can make new lower class, but then again, you still have lower class people. It's ultimately never going to end when it comes to this cycle. But at first, people don't even want to kill. They just want to party and have fun. A few people set up traps to keep people, I guess, from destroying their stuff. And yeah, there's maybe a couple crimes. Yeah, those were bad. And But no one was killing anyone. Well, I shouldn't say that. One person was murdering people. And they're like, hey, that's what we want to see. The new founding fathers, they were like, yeah, that's what we need. We need more people doing that. But there weren't enough. So they basically manipulate the system, send out a bunch of mercenaries to start killing off, like I said, the lower class, which is really stupid because that's all your low-level employees, you know. There's a reason we have the lower class. Being a part of that lower class myself, yeah, I would love to be rich, but right now I'm in the lower class. I'll admit it. And we are your workforce. We are the people doing the jobs you don't want to do. We are the people who pick up the slack so your company can make some money. Because I'll tell you what, you get rid of us. I mean, I work for a pizza place. I don't know if I'm allowed to say which one. But, yeah, pretty much everybody that works there, except maybe my boss, would be considered lower class. For the majority, that's all your lower class people right there. We ain't making much money in this small town working at a pizza joint so if that's how it is for us it's probably the same cross country because once people actually have enough money do you think they want to do those medium wage jobs i don't think so do you think they had need to do those medium wage jobs again i don't think so Somebody has to do those jobs. You can't get rid of lower class because then you have no one to do your own dirty work for you. So that whole idea of this, you know, is kind of crazy. But moving on. Finally, number one, the Purge Election Year. Now this to me is the best of the franchise because this is showing, this lays out all the groundwork that was done in the previous movies um it reveals what's really going on which you know i was just talked about the whole idea is that the government wants to use the purge to get rid of the lower class now they understand it's not going to all happen all at once 
but they don't talk that way. They talk as every purge could finally eliminate the lower class. But it really, honestly, it's just making it smaller numbers. It's a form of population control. That's basically it. The purge was designed to be population control that the people want and people are okay with. But apparently not everybody's okay with it because this woman running for president is basically basing her platform off stopping the purge. And she's actually doing really well and she might win. So the big twist of this movie was actually that they're like, well, you know what? This one year, nobody is safe from the purge. Anybody can be purged just so she could die. And because if she died, then they'd have some explaining to do on how she could have been killed when she's supposed to be protected. It brings back some characters from the previous movies. Um, so that's really good. You also find out there's basically this resistance against the Purge that want her to win so that this will be the last night of the final Purge. And I guess, you know, not having context for what came after yet, that this woman gets elected and the Purge ends then. It seems like she's not the only one who's fighting to stop the purges. There's this whole, like I said, resistance. And this is what you got hints of in the previous movies. So that's really interesting there. So this has been my ranking of the entire Purge franchise. Like I said, do you agree? Do you disagree? I'd love to hear your comments down below. At the beginning of this video, before I started the ranking, I said if you stuck around till the end, I would give you an interesting story regarding this franchise. So, back when the first movie had been out and they were getting ready for a second movie, I remember watching a bunch of different people review this. I remember talking to several people and they're like, yeah, there's absolutely no way that this would ever happen this is so unrealistic it could never work it would never work it's so fake and i'm like really it's a pretty firm stance i mean at the time we didn't know certain things which have made it seem more realistic but the clues were all there back in the first movie and this isn't just, like I said, one source. It's different people, different comments. Then we got Avengers Infinity War. And Thanos was explaining his plan. Which honestly is kind of the exact same thing. And it's really funny that when people were talking about that. They were like, oh yeah, I totally agree with Thanos. That would so work. If you just got rid of half of everyone, that would definitely work. It's like, wait a minute. You think that would work, but you don't think that the Purge would work. What? <laughs> How does that make sense? At least the Purge is a little bit more controllable than Thanos snapping and just getting rid of half of anyone. I mean, that was completely random. Yeah, there's more resources to go around, but... I mean, there's no way to control it. If anything, the purge is better because... You can safeguard certain people who only have certain knowledge. I mean, you can make our smartest, you know, scientists... You can make them safe. So... That's one thing I've always found really interesting is that people, they say the purge is impossible, but Thanos is A-OK. -okay. So this has been my purge ranking. I hope you enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun doing this. I watched 
the two seasons of the TV show. I really hope there's going to be a third and that they continue this this show. Uh, this is a franchise that honestly could keep essentially going forever. They could keep making stories. They got a large like 30 or 40 year window of movies that they could make. And they don't have to limit themselves. They could go a different movie, a different city every time. There's really no end to this. Even if it was only for those 30, 40 years, they have so much content to work with. It's not even funny. So I hope you enjoyed this. I want to thank you for watching. If you have not, please subscribe to this channel. And make sure to click the notification bell so you are notified the second a new video goes up. I will be doing some giveaways and I will be doing some giveaways coming in the near future. So if you like audiobooks and you want to get a free audiobook, make sure to tune in. Also, check out the video linked below and I'll tell you how you can get some free books of your own. I want to thank you all for watching. And I should probably get out of here before the NFFA discovers I hacked into this. So I'll talk to you guys next time. When the purge concludes, blessed be our new founding fathers and America, a nation reborn. May God be with you all.